in the last class I have introduced uh, basic concepts of probability and uh, we have given certain definitions. Uh, I call them the classical definition of probability, the relative frequency definition of the probability and the axiomatic definition of probability. Uh, let me just uh, repeat the last definition which I said axiomatic definition of probability. According to this probability is a function defined on the event space. So, we say that probability of every event is always non-negative, probability of the full sample space is 1 and if I have a collection of pair wise disjoint events then the probability of their union is equal to sum of the probabilities. Now, which is called actually uh, an axiom of additivity. As a consequence of this we saw that the probability always lies between 0 and 1, probability is a monotone function that means, if an event is more likely to occur then probability of that will be larger. Uh, probability of uh, a complementary event is equal to 1 minus the probability of the original event and probability of the impossible event is 0. Uh, now, you can consider this as a broad framework under which all the probabilities lie. That means, whether we calculate the probability using uh, the classical definition of probability or if we calculate the probability using the relative frequency definition of probability it must satisfy the framework of the given by the axiomatic definition. Uh, I will continue with some of the rules uh, which will follow from the axiomatic definition. You may note that uh, some of the proofs may be given in your uh, book of class 11th and 12th, but here I will be giving the proof specifically using the axiomatic definition. That means, the set theoretic construction of the probability that has been given will be used here. So, the first rule which is the um, follow up from the definition this is called the addition rule of probability. The rule is as follows let A and B be any two events, then probability of A union B is given by probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. I will explain through the Venn diagram. Suppose, we consider this as the sample space and we have two events say A and B here. Suppose, this is event A and this is event B. So, the probability of A union B that is this entire thing is probability of this A and the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. This is because A intersection B term has been added twice because in A, A intersection B is included and A intersection B is also included in B. That means, when we are saying probability of A plus probability of B, then we are adding this probability of A intersection B two times. Therefore, we remove it once. Let me give a theoretical proof of this and you can see that using this set theoretic representation, the proof is very simple. So, let us see. We can write the set A union B equal to. So, we consider this part A. So, this entire thing is this is A. Now, if I add only this part uh, the dotted part then I will get the entire A union B. Now, if you look at this dotted part it is actually B from the B we are removing the portion A intersection B. So, we can write it as A union B minus A intersection B. So, let us see this set theoretic representation A union B is this entire thing 
this i am writing as union of two disjoint sets one set i take to be a itself which is this portion which is lined portion now the in the remaining part i have this dotted portion that is some part of b and what part of b here from the whole set b we remove this lined part which is actually a intersection b this is exactly equal to b minus a intersection b so if i consider probability of a union b now i am saying it is equal to probability of these two union of these two disjoint sets therefore this will become probability of a plus probability of b minus a intersection b now we can look at this further what is the type of result i am having if you remember we considered one result yesterday if i have f as a subset of e then i got probability of e minus f is equal to probability of e minus probability of f that means the probability of difference between two events is equal to the difference of the probabilities of the two events provided one of the events is a subset of another so here we got this statement if f is a subset of e then we have probability of e minus f is equal to probability of e minus probability of f so let us use this on this term in this term a intersection b is a subset of b therefore this becomes probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b and if you look at read the statement completely now it is probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b which is actually the addition rule so you can see using this set theoretic representation and the axioms the proof of the statement is very easy it is extremely trivial so uh, this addition rule is used to calculate the probability of union of two events now the natural question arises in place of the union of two events if i have union of three events if i have union of 10 events then what will be the extension of this so we consider extension firstly to 3 and then i will show you that the extension to any number is also easy extension to 3 events say a b c so we consider probability of a union b union c now in this i can consider a union b as a block so we can write it as a union b plus probability of c minus probability of a union b intersection c so what we have do, done i have applied actually the addition rule which is given for two events on this by taking this as one event and this as another event so it is probability of the first one plus the probability of the second one minus the probability of the first one intersection with the second one now on the first part here again i can apply the addition rule so this i can write as probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b then we have this probability of c let us look at this term here i am having a union b intersection c on this i apply the distributive property of the sets what is the distributive property of the sets this becomes a intersection c union b intersection c so again i am having probability of one set union another set and again on this part i can apply the addition rule 
So, this becomes so let me compile the terms here probability A plus probability of B and this third term plus probability of C minus probability of A intersection B. Now, I have this term with a minus sign outside. So, I will put it as a minus and I will put it in the parenthesis probability of A intersection C plus probability of B intersection C minus probability of A intersection C intersection B intersection C. So, what I have done? I have applied the addition rule on this particular term which gives me this. So, if I collect all the terms, I am getting probability A plus probability of B plus probability of C and now let us look at the terms which are involving two events. So, you are having minus probability of A intersection B minus probability of A intersection C minus probability of B intersection C and then the last term will become plus because here you have a minus sign here. So, this becomes plus probability of now you are having A intersection C and intersection with B intersection C. So, if I open this uh, parenthesis here, it becomes actually A intersection B intersection C. So, you have proved the formula for the addition rule for three events. That means, if I have three events A, B and C, then the probability of the union is given by firstly sum of the probabilities taking one at a time then minus here I am considering probabilities of intersection of two of them. So, intersection of A with B, intersection of A with C, intersection of B with C and then you are further doing plus here intersection 3 at a time. Now, why that has happened? We can actually try to understand it using some sort of uh, Venn diagram. Let us consider three events say A B C. So, if I am considering the probability of the union, I am looking at probability of A. So, A is this full term, then you are looking at the B and then you are looking at the C. Now, from here this A intersection B which was taken twice has been removed, then B intersection C which was taken twice has been removed and A intersection C which has been taken twice has also been removed. But in the process this A intersection B intersection C has been removed one additional time because three times you added and three times you removed. So, here that term is totally out. So, this A intersection B intersection C should have been actually added. So, that is justified here by the theoretical proof here. So, if I have more than two events then also this addition rule is applicable. In fact, this gives you an idea that how a generalization will be there. Suppose, I have four events. If I have four events, then the probability of the union will give me the formula probability of taking each of them. So, that will be the sum then minus taking two at a time all the combinations of events taking two at a time. So, 4 C 2 6 such terms will be there and then plus 3 at a time. So, 4 such terms will be there and then again with a minus all of them together. Now, that gives rise to whether we can have a general addition rule. The answer is yes. Um, now, in uh, mathematics proofs, you have done something called the principle of mathematical induction. Uh, I will show you that by using this principle of mathematical induction, we can prove the general addition rule. So, let us go for that. General addition So, let A 1, A 2 and so on A n be any events 
then probability of union of a i i is equal to 1 to n that is equal to summation probability of a i i is equal to 1 to n that is sums taking one at a time minus probability of a i intersection a j i less than j plus triple summation probability of a i intersection a j intersection a k i less than j less than k minus and so on plus minus 1 to the power n plus 1 probability of intersection a i i is equal to 1 to n. That means, the last term will be taking all of them together and the sign will depend upon whether you have an uh, odd number of events or even number of events. So, if you have an odd number of events, then the last term will become positive. If you have an even number of events, then the last term will become negative. As you have seen, when I considered odd number of events, 3 events here, then the last term was positive. In the case of 2, this is even number of terms, so the last term is negative. So, let us look at the proof of this. I mentioned to you that I will use the principle of mathematical induction for this. Now, let me call this relationship uh, 1 to refer back. We will prove the relation 1 using the principle of mathematical induction. Now, let me just uh, remind you what is the principle of mathematical induction. In the principle of mathematical induction, if we want to prove a statement say p n for all n, where n takes positive integral values, then we should firstly prove that p 1 is true and then we assume that p k is true for n is equal to k and using that we prove that p k plus 1 is true. Let me repeat the steps. Firstly, we show that for n is equal to 1 this is true and then we assume that for n is equal to k it is true and using that we prove for k plus 1. An alternative way or a secondary way of looking at it is that we prove it for 1 and we assume it up to k and then we use it to pay, prove it for k plus 1. So, let me write here the proof for this statement the which is given for the general addition rule. So, for n is equal to 1, what is the statement? If I put n is equal to 1 here, in the union I will have exactly one term that means, it will become probability of a 1 and on the right hand side I will get exactly one term that is probability of a 1. So, probability of a 1 is equal to probability of a 1. So, the statement is trivially true. So, for n is equal to 1 the statement 1 becomes p of a 1 is equal to p of a 1, which always holds true. So, next we assume the statement 1 to be true for all n is equal to k. So, let us say for n is equal to k rather than saying for all n is equal to k. So, then we prove it for n is equal to k plus 1. 
So, for k plus 1 what is the left hand term? The left hand term becomes probability of union a i, i is equal to 1 to k plus 1. So, this we write as probability of union a i, i is equal to 1 to k union a k plus 1. Now, here what I have done? I have written it as union of two terms. So, this union from 1 to k I write as one event and another event is a k plus 1. Now, for the two we have already the addition rule. So, we apply the addition rule. So, I will get that is equal to probability of union a i i is equal to 1 to k plus probability of a k plus 1 minus probability of union a i a k plus 1. Okay. This is by addition rule for two events. Now, if you look at the first term, this is probability of union of k events and we have made the assumption that for n is equal to k, the statement is true. That means, on this term we can directly apply the addition rule and write whatever term is there, which is actually available through this formula. Only thing is in place of n, we will write k here. For all the terms, we will put k. So, this then becomes, so this is equal to sigma probability of a i, i is equal to 1 to k minus double summation i less than j probability of a i less than a j. And let me write here the upper term also just to denote that we have terms which are going ranging up to k only. So, I am putting 1 k here plus triple summation probability of a i intersection a j intersection a m i less than j less than m and these terms range up to k only and so on. Finally, we have minus 1 to the power k plus 1 probability of intersection of a i, i is equal to 1 to k. Now, this term which I have written is basically the expansion of probability of union a i from 1 to k, because we assumed the statement to be true for n is equal to k. Now, the next term is probability of a k plus 1, which I write here as such. <coughs> Let us look at the next term. Here it is intersection of a set taken with the union. Again, I can apply the distributive property of the unions and intersections. So, this term becomes minus probability of union a i intersection a k plus 1 i is equal to 1 to k. Again, you can see that it has become union of k terms. And uh, therefore, the addition rules formula which has been assumed to be true for k events can be applied on this. So, let me repeat the terms here. Here I have summation of probability of a i from 1 to k and here I have probability of a k plus 1. So, this term I can add here. So, this first term becomes probability of a i i is equal to 1 to k plus 1 and then the remaining terms I will write as such i less than j ranging up to k probability of a i intersection a j plus probability of a i intersection a j intersection a m i less than j less than m up to k minus 1 to the power k plus 1 probability of intersection a i, i is equal to 1 to k. Uh, this term I have already written combined with this. 
now we are getting this term. So, I will put a parenthesis here let us put a square bracket this is probability of union of k events and I apply the addition rule for this. So, if I apply the addition rule for this it becomes summation probability of a i intersection a k plus 1 i is equal to 1 to k then minus double summation i less than j probability of a i intersection a k plus 1 intersection a j intersection a k plus 1 and this is ranging up to k and so on minus 1 to the power k plus 1 probability of intersection of a i intersection a k plus 1 i is equal to 1 to k. Uh, let me read this term carefully if you have not been able to see it carefully. This is probability of intersection a i intersection a k plus 1 because these are the sets that are available in the expansion that this is the term which I am expanding. So, the sets are of the type a i intersection a k plus 1. So, the last term will include the intersection of all of them that is intersection a i intersection a k plus 1 from i is equal to 1 to k. Now, we observe what are the terms here. So, let us look at this term remains as such. Let us come to this what are the terms here. If I look at the terms this is probability of a 1 intersection a k plus 1, probability of a 2 intersection a k plus 1, probability of a 3 intersection a k plus 1 and so on up to probability of a k intersection a k plus 1. That means, all the subscripts which are less than k plus 1 their intersection with a k plus 1 has been taken and there is a minus sign here. You look at these terms here all the intersections are there for i less than j, but this is only up to k. That means, you will have terms like a 1 intersection a 2, a 1 intersection a 3, a 1 intersection a k, a 2 intersection a 3, a 2 intersection a k and so on up to a k minus 1 intersection a k plus 1 a k all these terms will be there. So, here since all the terms are up to k and now we have added one additional term that is a k plus 1 and all such terms are there. So, I can combine this with this term. So, that will give me. So, let me write the combined terms now this is probability of a i i is equal to 1 to k plus 1 minus double summation i less than j probability of a i intersection a j up to k plus 1. So, that is the difference please note this difference here here we had up to k now we are having up to k plus 1. Now, let us look at the next one. So, here we are having intersection of 3 events all the terms taken up to k that is I may have terms like a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a 3, a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a 4, a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a k. Similarly, a 2 intersection a 3 intersection a k and so on up to finally, I will get the terms a k minus 2 intersection a k minus 1 intersection a k. So, all such terms will be there taken 3 at a time where the subscripts run up to k. Now, let us look at and this is with a positive sign. Now, let us look at this term here. Here it is a i intersection a j intersection a k plus 1 because a k plus 1 is coming at two places. So, i and j subscripts are for 1 to k and then you are taking intersection with k plus 1. That means, I will get terms like a 1 intersection a 2 intersection a k plus 1 a 1 intersection a 3 intersection a k plus 1 and so on a k minus 1 a k intersection a k plus 1. That means, in this all the terms are coming such that this will become up to k plus 1 that is 3 at a time. So, I can write this here plus summation 
probability of a i intersection a j intersection a k. Uh, so, let me put here a m i less than j less than m up to k plus 1. So, what we are observing that these terms which were up to k are getting extended up to k plus 1 now all these terms. So, similar thing will happen with all the terms you can show and let us look at the last terms now. So, the last term here is intersection of all the a i's for 1 to k and then intersection with a k plus 1. So, basically it becomes intersection of all the terms that is all a i's for i is equal to 1 to k plus 1. Let us look at the sign of this. This is minus 1 to the power k plus 1 and there is an additional minus outside. So, this will again be combined with this to give us plus minus 1 to the power k plus 2 probability of intersection a i i is equal to 1 to k plus 2. So, if I look at what I have proved, we have actually written probability of union a i i is equal to 1 to k plus 1 equal to sum of all the probabilities taking one at a time minus sum of all the probabilities taking two at a time plus sum of all the probabilities taking three at a time minus and so on and finally, probability of intersection of all the events which is exactly the statement which I wrote for this n. If I replace n by k plus 1 here that is the statement I will be getting here. So, this shows that a statement true a statement 1 is true for n is equal to k plus 1. Hence, by the principle of mathematical induction the general addition rule holds for all n where n is a positive integer. Uh, so, uh, these rules are used for, so I have actually given certain consequences from the uh, axiomatic definition and the first consequence or you can say first important consequence is that we can calculate the probability of union of certain number of events. So, this type of uh, formula is extremely useful. I will show one example uh, just to show how we can use it for calculation of uh, probabilities where certain complex events may be there. So, actually I will apply uh, the classical definition for calculation of the basic probabilities and then we will apply this addition rule. So, let me take one such example. Suppose, 6 cards are drawn one by one with replacement from a well shuffled pack of fifty two cards. Okay, so, let me uh, re repeat the language here. So, the terminology with replacement means that we draw a card, we note down what is the card and we put it back in the deck and again we take another card, again note down what is the card and again put it back in the pack of cards. So, 6 times this experiment is 
repeated. We want to find out the probability that in this set of six cards each of the four suits that is heart, a spade, club and diamond appear So, each of the four suits heart, spade, club and diamond appear in this set of six cards. That means, no suit is unrepresented. That means, I do not have the situation where only heart is there or only heart is not there or spade is there or spade is not there or two of them are there or two of them are not there. Whatever be the six, uh, set of six such cards, all four will be there. That means, some may be more than one also because total six are there. So, maybe you have uh, two hearts, two spades, one club and one diamond etcetera. So, what is the probability of this? Uh, so, you can go and uh, directly enumerate also. I will show you that if we use this uh, addition rule, the calculation of this probability becomes quite simple. So, I am solving this problem using the general addition rule. So, let A be the event that the set of six cards contains at least one card of each suit. So, <coughs> then what is A complement? A complement will mean that at least one suit does not in the set of six cards. The purpose of doing like this is that I will show you that first of all we are using a set theoretic representation of the events. Uh, if we do not know the set theoretic representation then we will can start counting straight away. As I mentioned you calculate the possibility 3 hearts, 1 spade, 1 club, 1 diamond, 3 spades, 1 heart, 1 club, 1 diamond, 3 clubs, 1 heart, 1 spade, 1 diamond and so on. Then 2 hearts, 2 spade, 1 club, 1 diamond like that. So, you can look at all the possibilities, calculate the probability of each of them and then add. So, that is the straightforward fashion, uh, but then you do not need to really define many events. What I am trying to do here is to use the set theoretic notation and apply the addition rule and you will see that the answer becomes very nicely calculated here. So, I am taking A complement as the event that at least one suit does not appear in the set of six cards. So, let us consider then event B 1 by saying that say heart do not appear. Then you can write B 2 as saying say spades do not appear, B 3 as the event say clubs do not appear and B 4 say saying diamonds do not appear. Then we can write A complement as union of B i, i is equal to 1 to 4. 
because what is the meaning of union occurrence of at least one of them. So, here I said a complement is at least one suit does not appear. So, here since b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 denote that one of them does not appear. So, union will mean at least one of them does not appear. So, this is an exact representation of a complement. So, if I apply the general addition rule, then probability of a complement will become probability of the union and for the union of four events, I apply the general addition rule. Now, for application of this, I will need to calculate probabilities of b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4, probability of b 1 intersection b 2, b 1 intersection b 3 and so on, probability of intersection taking 3 at a time and probability of intersection of all of them. So, let us look at this by general addition rule. probability of A complement is equal to probability of union B i that is equal to sigma probability of B i i is equal to 1 to 4 minus i less than j up to 4 probability of B i intersection B j plus probability of B i intersection B j intersection B k i less than j less than k up to 4 and minus probability of intersection of all of them. So, this is the addition rule for 4 events for the union of 4 events. I need to calculate the terms in each of these summations here. So, let us start with the first one, I consider what is the probability of B 1. Okay. So, let me keep this uh, here to show you that what are the terms that I am actually enumerating. So, first of all, let us look at what is the probability of B 1. Now, B 1 is the event that hearts do not appear. B 1 is the event hearts do not appear. What does it mean? If I am considering 6 times the cards have been drawn, in the first one it is not a heart, second one is not a heart and so on up to sixth one it is not a heart. So, if I consider the first one is not a heart, then what does it mean? Out of total number of cards, you have 13 cards of heart, total number of cards are 52. So, you are saying that in one draw, you are drawing any card which is other than the heart. That means, the card has been drawn out of the remaining 39 cards. So, the probability of drawing a card which is not a heart, it will become 39 by 52 that is 3 by 4. So, in one draw, the probability that it is not a heart that becomes 3 by 4. Now, this thing is repeated 6 times because you are putting back the card. So, next time also the calculation of the probability will be same because next time again you have 52 cards out of which there are 13 cards which are not hard. So, again it will become 3 by 4 and you will be actually repeating this 6 times. So, basically you are getting 3 by 4 to the power 6. Now, if I am considering B 2, then B 2 is, is spades do not appear. The calculation of the probability for B 2 will be same as what I gave the argument for that hearts do not appear. Because if spades also there are 13 cards. So, if in a draw there is no spade, then the probability will be 3 by 4. So, we can actually give the statement that probability of B i is equal to 3 by 4 to the power 6 for i is equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, these are the terms which are actually 
included in this probability of bi because here i need probability of b1 probability of b2 probability of b3 and probability of b4 so all the terms are calculated they are all same as 3 by 4 to the power 6 so in the final calculation i will be putting the value 4 into 3 by 4 to the power 6 let us look at the next term now this includes probability of b1 intersection b2 b1 intersection b3 b1 intersection b4 b2 intersection b3 and so on out of 4 you are taking 2 at a time so the number of terms will be 6 that is 4 c2 that is 4 combination 2 so there will be 6 terms which will involve probability of b i intersection b j let us look at the calculation of this suppose i write probability of b 1 intersection b 2 so b 1 intersection b 2 means that hearts and spades do not appear now in the total collection of 52 cards there are 26 cards which are hearts and spades so you are saying they do not appear so in one draw the probability will be half that it is not a heart and not a spade then second draw since you have replaced the card so the deck is again complete the probability remains the same so in six times you are doing so it actually again becomes using the previous argument half to the power 6 and actually you can write probability of b i intersection b j that is equal to half to the power 6 where i is less than j so there are total such 4 c 2 that is equal to 6 terms are there then in the next one there are 3 terms <coughs> so you are saying 3 of the types do not appear that means i can say hearts spades and clubs do not appear basically it means you are saying only diamonds appear so if only diamond appear the probability will be 1 by 4 and you are doing it 6 times so in general i can say probability of b i intersection b j intersection b k will be 1 by 4 to the power 6 for i less than j less than k so there are total such 4 terms are there you have 4 terms here 6 terms here and 4 terms here now let us look at the last term the last term is intersection of all the four events but what are the events the events are hearts do not appear spades do not appear clubs do not appear and diamonds do not appear so roughly you are saying that nothing appears which is not possible because when you draw a card it will be one of these so the probability of intersection b i becomes zero so probability of intersection b i i is equal to 1 to 4 is equal to 0 now in this formula i have evaluated all the terms so if i substitute here i will get so probability of a complement becomes 4 times 3 by 4 to the power 6 minus 6 times half to the power 6 plus 4 times 1 by 4 to the power 6 so one can simplify this and uh, we get the term equal to 317 by 512 which is approximately 0 0.62 and you can calculate probability of a that is 1 minus probability of a that is equal to 195 divided by 512 that is approximately 0 0.38 uh, apart from doing this calculation actually i have shown you an application of the general addition rule but apart from that let us also appreciate the numerical value that i am writing here so when we are considering drawing of six cards one by one with replacement 
there is a 62 percent chance that means more than 60 percent chance that at least one of the suits is not represented. And uh, similarly here if I am drawing 6 cards there is less than 40 percent chance that each of the suits will be represented at least once. So, uh, in fact what is the general feeling that if I have actually uh, 4 types of suits and we are drawing 6 times. So, naturally there is a feeling that there is will be a high probability that each of them will be appearing at least once, but as you can see the value is less than 0.4 that is less than 40 percent chance that each of them will be represented. So, uh, actually one of the basic purposes of calculation of the numerical value for the probability is to have a feeling for the how much chance we are having. So, like we give loose statement there is a 90 percent chance that it will rain uh, tomorrow or it will be very cold tomorrow this kind of statements we give. So, this 90 percent term that we are saying. So, that is something like denoting a probability. So, the actual calculation of the probability is using the rules tells you that how much belief or how much trust you can give in such statements. Uh, so, I have shown you one uh, simple application. Uh, now, I will give you one or two uh, new definitions here. Let us consider say suppose I consider a die is rolled okay, and le let us consider it to be a fair die. Okay. I consider say an event say I say what is event uh, A suppose I say one occurs that is the upper face is 1. Then what is the probability of A? It is 1 by 6. I define another event B and I say odd number occurs. Then what is the probability of B? It is half because odd number means 1, 3, 5. Now, I give another statement what is the probability that one occurs given that an odd number occurs. Now, you see I have modified my statement I already know that an odd number has occurred. So, here my sample space has become much less it is only 3 terms and assuming that fair if I calculate the probability of 1 it will become 1 by 3. So, what is the probability of A given that B occurs or B has occurred that is equal to 1 by 3. This is the concept of conditioning. So, I call it conditional probability. You can see here the probability of event A is actually 1 by 6 that is what is the probability in the uh, tossing of a dice it is 1 by 6, but if I am considering that an odd number has occurred then what is the probability of 1 then it becomes 1 by 3 that means if there is an additional information in a random experiment then the probabilities get modified this concept is uh, given by conditional probability. So, in the next lecture I will introduce uh, conditional probability and uh, based on conditional probability there will be certain rules and certain theorems which I will explain and then we will go to solve certain problems on this.